Okay, I didn't realise that we would be getting diet advice when we came to the Climate Change Conference, but um, thank you, John, for sharing your diet with us. Okay, now we move on to um, onto questions. Um, so we've got 15 to 20 minutes here for some questions. Um, I'm not just at the stage seeing anything coming up on the app. To start off, do we have anything from the floor? You're all looking really thirsty. No questions? Oh, here's the app coming. Okay, look, we'll um, start off with this top one. Uh, within the research impacts of climate change, on how has the global disruption to political security and therefore market security been included in calculations of the future market value, if at all? Who wants to kick off? So... Oh try and answer that, uh, which is basically, I think, researchers in New Zealand probably haven't looked at that too much yet. I mean, there has been research looking at the disruption um, on food prices, but not including climate change, as far as I'm aware. There might be some international work, I think there is, but I, I couldn't answer that definitively. But someone else might be able to. <laughs> okay, we'll move on. Next question. Um, could leaky or dry land be modified with a soil amendment such as biochar to mitigate for land use? Uh, short answer is no. I don't think we produce either enough of it um, nor do that cheaply enough to make a material difference in both uh, the soil carbon quantity but also as the question referred to leakiness, uh, nor does it have much of an effect in terms of either nitrogen or phosphorus losses in terms of what we modelled. Um, in fact, uh, you know, when you're looking at, at mitigations, I mentioned we didn't include it, um, and that's because we recognise that when you layer one on top on, on, on another, um, you can have a material decrease, but you're still not going to, to meet uh, freshwater quality targets in between 6 and 13% of our, our catchments. Um, and it's also going to cost quite a bit. So there will be a point at which you have to make the decision to switch from either from mitigation through to something, i.e. transformation into different land use. OK, thanks, Richard. How do we change perceptions around the impact of animal-based diet and who should do this? So I guess that's leading on, John, from your presentation. Yeah, um, that's a great question, um, and I don't really have the answer to it. I think, um, you know, we, we, need, we need to educate the consumer. We need, to, we need to provide the information that we have. We also need to acknowledge that uh, everything we eat um, has, a, has a warming impact on the planet. Um, and, uh, you know, as a research community, we need to work on, on the, different, uh, the different factors that are contributing to that warming impact of those different food ingredients. Um, but it looks, um, we're, we're, the vast majority of us are on social media. Um, uh, we, we use the same media channels that the people that claim animal protein bad, plant-based protein good use as well. Um, so I think it, it is a case of just getting the truth out there. Okay. Look, I think um, just to get us back on track, we might wrap it up there. But look, can I just um, ask you to uh, thank our four panellists up here for their insights and their knowledge that they've shared with us this afternoon. Thank you very much. Harry, I believe the floor is yours to wrap us up before we um, head out for a drink. So it's going to have to be quick, Harry. And I definitely don't be the one, don't want to be the one who's holding you up for a drink. I'll leave that to John. That was John's fault if we were late at all. So very luckily, I don't have any time to do a wrap up, which is great because I hadn't taken any notes and I usually forget them and can't interpret them very well anyway. I think the only, the, the key message I got today, there's a, ch there's a challenge, there's pressure at every point from industry, from government, there's pressure from climate change itself. 
What we all accept is we have to change. And I think the challenge is, change is always a challenge in itself. We always uh, fight against change. It's uncomfortable, but we've got to change. And I think we have to change in ways that are acceptable to society, uh, both at an individual and societal level. But I will finish it there. We've had a lot about sticks and carrots and doom and gloom. Well, our stick and carrot is we've got some drinks and food upstairs for everyone who wants to stay, uh, look at the post posters, and then um, you know, have a conversation with the people who are here. For those who are, of you who are staying for dinner, that will be at 6.30. Uh, up in the Marae. Uh, but so for now, it's thank you, everyone. Thank you, all the speakers, and please enjoy having a drink. <laughs>